Okay, we are trying to find the Taylor expansion for a simple function just to show how it's done, emphasize the key parts. Uh, so I chose uh, f of x to be just the square root function. Uh, I graphed it here. Uh, hopefully that you can see that. Again, I've got this old calculator with the burn spot in the middle, but it sort of works. Um, so we are going to uh, just try to remember this simple formula that our Taylor series expansion is going to be summation from n equals zero to, well, wherever, but we're going to pretend we're going to infinity at the start. Uh, we've got three things we have to be concerned with. So, so I think mentally, if you just sort of fill in three spots here, we're always going to have um, the successive derivatives of the function, all right? So we denote that with this n up there. So that's where we make our little ticky marks for derivatives. So we're going to count from zero derivatives. That's just the function to the first, second, third, fourth, and nth derivative. And then we're going to evaluate, and I should say where we're going to center this at. So we're going to center this at, let's, taking square roots and things, let's center it at one because that is a very sensible thing to do. It would be much more difficult if we did not have one. Um, zero doesn't work for this because we'll just get lots of terms of zeros. And so, uh, and then we're going to do this at that point at a, okay, at the point where we're centering this at. Then it's always over n factorial, and then we are going to have x minus a to the nth power. I should sneak that in there, okay? So just remember that you've got to keep the nth power there. You've got to have n here, and we're counting n number of. Uh, Derivative. So I think it's helpful to make a little uh, chart. We're going to start with f to the 0. That is no derivative. That's our original function, and that's going to be x to the 1 half power. Write it like that. Makes it much easier to do f with the first derivative, and that's going to be 1 half x to then the minus 1 half. Let's take away 1, obviously. f second derivative will then be multiply that very carefully. This is where you just want to be very systematic go slowly enough that you can do this. Taking away 1 there will give me minus 3 halves. Keep going. F with 3 little ticky marks. Third derivative. And then I'm going to multiply this in. Negative and negative is positive 3 eighths. And then x to the minus, wait for it, 5 halves. And then the fourth derivative, I'm going to start writing a little 4 there of x equals, multiply that in, I'm going to get 15, negative 15 over 16, x to the minus 7 over 2. So when do you stop? I don't know, that might be sensible, but this is so much fun, I'm just going to do it one more step. And it is going to be, okay, so let's see, that's going to be a negative times a negative is a positive, 105 over 32x to the minus 9 halves. All right, so that's a good start. Then we can start writing this out. I would say just put your n terms, maybe just make it really, really clear what n is. n is 0, then n is 1, then n is 2, then n is 3, and 4, and I'll sneak in 5 there, just barely. And so then Using uh, n equals zero, well, you're going to have again these three sort of pigeonholes to fill in. And in the first case, it's just the square root of one. That's my uh, first, um, you know, f without taking the derivative, um, evaluated at one, at a. And then it's going to be over zero factorial. And then this is x minus one to the zero power. Okay, so that is just going to be. 1 times 1 over uh, 1, so that is just going to be 1, all right? So I'll try to clean them up as I go vertically here. Then this next one, it's going to be plus, and then I'm going to fill in, um, when I plug in 1 in all of these cases, taking the, um, you know, negative, um, or taking 1 raised to the negative 3 has power, all of these are just going to stay 1. That's the beauty of this particular example. So these all just become 1, and all I'm doing is looking at this coefficient value here. So it's going to be 1 half, and then over 1 factorial, and then times x minus 1 to the 1 power, all right? And I think it makes sense to fill in going, vertical, uh, going horizontally very carefully, and then clean up later. 
So here then will be a minus one fourth, and then over two factorial, and then x minus one to the second. And by this time I'm thinking, all right, I want to be as systematic as I can. I'm going to do all these x minus ones, and then count carefully x minus 1 to the 4th, and then way out here will be x minus 1 to the 5th, all right? And then I know that this is always going to be over a factorial, and that's going to be 3 factorial, and 4 factorial, and 5 factorial, and then this will go from minus to plus 3 eighths, and then minus 15 sixteenths, and then plus 105 over 32, okay? And then now I can go vertically and clean this up. So 1 half over 1 is just 1 half, so this, I'm going to skip all the way down here, it goes plus uh, 1 half x minus 1, okay? And that's to the first power. Then minus, okay, 1 fourth divided by 2 factorial is 1 eighth, and then x minus 1 to the second, and then this is going to be plus Okay, well 3 is 3 times 2, and this 3 will cancel with that 3, and 2 times 8 is 1 16th, so practice with your fractions if you need to, and that's to the third, and then this is minus, and then this is 4, 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, the uh, 3 cancels with the 5 and 15 and makes it into 5, so it's 5 then over 16 times uh, 4 times 2 is 8. Uh, that's going to be then 5 over 128. Check that. Make sure I did that correctly. I think I did. And then um, keep going on the fourth. So then the last one is plus, and again, this is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So here, 105 is. 3 times 5 times 7, so this 3 cancels with that 3, this 5 cancels with that 5, and I've got then 7 over 32 times 4 times 2 is 256, and then that's x minus 1 to the fifth. Okay, so we have now found the polynomial that will approximate that square root function. All right, so now is the time to check out and make sure. I hope that shows. Yeah, it looks like I chopped off a little bit. Sorry about that. It's hard to look through the camera at the same time as you're writing. Um, but I uh, hope that works well. Um, I'll type in just the first couple of terms here and turn that on. And this is the first three terms. So there's my graph. And you can see that the first three terms do a remarkable job of approximating that square root function. All right. If I add a few more terms, you'll see that this will start to close, and it'll close a little bit down there. So let's see. I've typed that all in. Turn that on. And uh, you can see that by adding three more terms, uh, I think it'll come closer up here. Let's see. Here it is. I've come closer down here and it hugs a little bit more but I, I've gone to I guess an odd number or an even number and so it's going up on the right if I did it one more time it would go down on the right but it would get closer and closer and closer okay there we go good luck